You're listening to Catalyst Church World Harvest Ministry Podcast, transforming lives and influencing the marketplace, campus, community, and the next generation. You know, I'd just like to not only welcome you, but to encourage you and tell you that this church is not about religion. It is about growing in the Lord. And so, as you have seen in the live class video, it's about the end result is about transforming lives. Na inigpuman, dili lang sa pagsimba, na sa domingo, but sa adlaw-adlaw, in each and every day, we are growing, we develop a conquering spirit, we become loving, our lives are restored, our love lives not only are refreshed, but transformed so that we could live lives the way God wants us to live life. It's going to be awesome. And um, every Sunday, we have been speaking about the series, Untangled. How many of you have been here a few Sundays to witness the series? Yes. Amen. And um, <clears throat> we, we've discussed a lot of things. And before that, let's come on, let's get into, the, into prayer for the Word of God. Father, we thank you for your presence. Through your Holy Spirit in our midst today, thank you for what Jesus did at the cross that made all this possible. The joy, the peace, even oh God, the victory that we are now enjoying and we continue, we will continue to enjoy as we lean and trust in you is always available. <clears throat> and so this morning we trust you and we open our hearts for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. This is for every one of us whose lives are entangled in some way with financial troubles, perhaps it's a confusion whether what's your purpose in life. And we talked about a mindset, having a conquering mindset. And um, a lot of people live with guilty conscience or living a lie. Last week we talked about people who are entangled with emotional disturbance, right? Now we also talked about you now experiencing freedom. God wants to set you free, and God wants to set you free. And then we talked about being entangled, winning the mind game. So crucial because he who wins who he, he, he who wins the mind gains access to the soul. But when you pray about everything and all this prescribed formula from the word of God, we will have peace. Last week was special in the sense that we were talking about the, the problem uh, of the, the heart of the human problem is a problem of the human heart. <coughs> and so it's about decoding the heart of the human problem. We humble ourselves before the Lord. There's lots of noises before us, but we extinguish them and we say, Lord, I want to see. Or Lord, I want to be healed. Or Lord, I want breakthrough. I want freedom. And then we remove the old mindset. And here we are every single day walking in our God-given new beginning. This, this morning is going to be, again, a, an untangling moment for us. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit that He will come and enjoy, uh, enjoy us with His presence so that we can be untangled. And it's about destroying the walls of error. So many people have lived have been living a lie that their situation seems to be their reality. <coughs> I have mentioned it a couple of times. Ang usa ka baka kung mo ay imong gituohan, mo ay mahimo ni mong kamatuohan. A lie believed becomes a person's reality. We need to destroy these walls of error. So sa ka mga movies or sa tong makita sa mga videos, and talk about castle, they always have, they always have walls. Because these walls, before you could plunder, <coughs> before you could get to the castle or into the, the trash, treasury house, or that, that, that keeps the, the treasure, the gold or the silver. Can you imagine with me, sa castle? 
Kinabalan sa na makalusot sa walls which are usually heavily fortified. <coughs> Not having to mention no, the, um, the uh, uh, enemy that is stationed sa walls. So nobody can get through it. But we can destroy these walls of error by the power of God. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and following, it says there, <coughs> We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, it says there, to knock down the strongholds. The word stronghold is synonymous with a castle, with the walls so such a castle. It is a hindrance. It is a barrier. It is something that is set up so that you cannot penetrate and you could not conquer or plunder what's on the inside that's being protected by the castle or by the walls rather. And you see, the devil, before they get through us, they have to break through these walls. But somehow, because of the lack of protection, because if we don't have a relationship with God, there's no walls that's protecting us from the lies. But this is even worse. We have set up through the years walls of errors so that God's word cannot penetrate our hearts. Such as negative mindset. We have erected these walls and we say, I want a good chance. That's a wall of error. Ignay mo tapat, guwag po kay ka, or guwag mo kay ka. Ang sa'yo yung reaksyon. Kung ningon mo galing siya na, purya ka pa. Lapad-lapad kita o wall of error. Kung perhaps ni smile lang siya, ha, medyo... Amuragin siya na, yeah, ako nang ginawat. <laughs> Go pati ko. You see, there's so many things God wants to communicate to us. But these walls of errors are hindering God's words to come in. I pray this morning we're gonna knock them down. <clears throat> Not with worldly weapons. But we use God's mighty weapons to knock down these strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. These arguments that tell you you are no good. These arguments that tell you you have no future. You are a failure. There's nothing anymore for you. These errors that that's telling you and then and keep shouting insecurity at you. That's why we have to extinguish these external noises. We must stop living a lie. We must destroy these walls. Receive the word of God and let this word of God become walls of truth. So that when a lie is, is when, when the devil tries to inject a lie in our mind, Dilin makalahos. Because as we've mentioned in Philippians 4 7, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is lovely, whatever is, is, is pure, trustworthy, we think of these things. You remember that? Mora yung atong mahimo ma, on a barrier before ang bakak makalusot, na yung pulong sa gino mamusagang na yun. We must treasure God's word more than the devil's lies. And it says in verse 5, We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. And here we go. Mo'y rasun, na no, mga tao, dili makadool sa gino. And with this alone, daghan kayo o mga nababangan. You are hindered from experiencing a dynamic relationship with God because of these arguments. And so, the Apostle Paul 
No, it's by the Holy Spirit to write these words, and then he said, We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. It also means we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. It also means if you keep hugging, if you keep if you try to keep those walls of error. You will be punished in a sense because you will miss God's best for your life. Ano man, you're always close. You're always protective. You're always, because of these errors, because of these lies, you're always thinking low of yourself. How many of you believe that this morning, God is going to set you free from these errors? Amen. The lies that we have come to believe becomes walls that stands between us and the will of God. These lies becomes hindrances so we could receive God's best. Amen. Mone sila ang mga bakap, these errors becomes deterrent, not only, actually not only a deterrent, but a, like a fortified gate. Sa inyo mga balay, how many of you, you have alarm systems? How many of you, you have um, wall gates? Or ba sinog? Pare sa mga, nabi gate, pero apuri ka nun ay. 24 hours. Tingnan naman, ang among mga bantay, mga tao, sa balay, huwag itulugay. How we do? Close them. We don't have dogs, but they don't bark. <laughs> They're very friendly. It's not the deterrent at all. We don't need walls. We don't need gates. We don't have gates. We don't need gates. What may mawala sa mo? So you may think that. Yes, in the physical realm, probably, ah, what may makawat yah? And practically, in a safe environment, even in our house back home, say, Higa, before all these troubles, before all the, you know, karun na lang, mamurag manirado na sila mama, but before it's always open. It's always open. If we can be casual about physical walls, we cannot be casual about spiritual walls. We need to protect ourselves. However, the point of our conversation this morning is the walls of error na kinahanglan na ito mabungkakot. Amen. In John chapter 8, in verse 31 to 32, it says there, Jesus said to the people who believed in Him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. This morning, I want you to believe that for every error from the devil, there's always an antidote from God's word. So, ang atuang istoryahan this morning is about error versus truth. And that God's truth is the antidote against the devil's errors. And that these errors are always so much lesser than God's truth. Amen. And we will destroy, have identified, not conclusive, not exhaustive, but common errors. And we're going to destroy these errors with God's truth. And nowadays, it's very easy for us to be somehow in, uh, entangled. It's very easy for us to experience these errors and we don't even seem to notice them. Let me give you five things. Number one, as we see in Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 to 10, it says that, For in Christ, lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ who is the head over every ruler and authority. It talks about completion. 
But the most common error that the devil throws at us and God's antidote is this, the error of emptiness versus the tangible presence of God. I bet every one of us can identify <clears throat> emptiness is when you have done everything yet you still feel empty. You don't recognize it at first but then after a while you get so discouraged because when people does not affirm you, when people does not agree with you, you feel sad. And you would say, I've done everything that you could ever ask me to do. May it be in the workplace, may it be in the school, may it be in a marriage, may it be, you know, you're trying to set up a thing for yourself. At the end of the day, you've done everything, but you still feel empty. That's a very common error. How to contradict that error? How to destroy that error of emptiness? And I would, see, I would say it is an error because there's no amount of diligence, there's no amount of, um, uh, 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 there's no amount of hard work can ever complete you. Kita ni you will realize the more you work, the more you feel there's so much work to be done. The more you study, you will realize there's so much more to study and to cope up with, to learning. There's no end. There seems to be no end. The more you put on the makeup, the more you, and the new rest is a new product. And so, seven layers now. Makeup, seven layers. Kaya lang, pitik ko na pagpitik. Mokrap, gito. Really? I'm just kidding, but... Uh, the more you, you desire the new gotcha, the, even though you have them already, you still feel empty. And you think that the next thing will give you the next high, but yet you will still feel empty. More so in trying to do everything. And that, that's why, and we talked about it last week, a lot of people get depressed. And that's why we have to... Um, and they code those problems. We need to come before the Lord, humble before the Lord, and say, Lord, it's not about my achievements. And here, it's not about what we do. It's about what Jesus has done for us. As opposed to the tangible presence of God. When we say tangible, it means substantially real. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, For in Christ, this is the truth. It's only in Christ is the fullness of God experience. Because Christ is the fullness of God in a human body. And not only that, not only in the in the in, in 2000 years ago, Manaapas Jesus, it says here, so you ikaw, you also are complete. Through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. I lay before you this powerful argument from God's word this morning. If you ever feel empty, because despite your efforts, you don't feel good about it. But you even feel the need to do some more. You need to stop where you're going, reflect, meditate, and say, God, I am reminded, I'm not made complete by these achievements. I'm made complete because I am your son and your daughter. Amen? <clears throat> Until we realize that, we will always become slaves to this error of emptiness. Because no amount of human affirmation can make you feel so good. At the end of the day, if you have the right happiness, to mo kigignan ka niya, cute lagi ka. Oh, di ba? Halam kayo kasi kasi, cute to puno ko. Nga later, nadungkan mo siya, gignan mo niya yung mga friend na, cute lagi ka. Cute ba yung tanan. Pagkawayayo. And then, you feel empty once again. You feel empty once again. 
When you are uploaded, woo, you have done well in this company. You've done excellent with your studies. Keep it up. Come on. And then the next grading period, you're only second. How does that make you feel? Empty. Ah. Until you put your hope in the Lord and His presence is what you determine to pursue, you will never run out of gas. You will always be joyful. Amen? I don't pressure my kids. I don't pressure them at all to perform. But rather, I would tell them, love Jesus. Jesus wants you to be excellent. Jesus wants you to do the right things. Just love Jesus. Just follow His will. Amen. In this world, we live in a pressure cooker world. So much pressure to perform. So much pressure to get this certain grade. I'm not saying it's wrong. And to be honest with you, and as much as I don't pressure my kids, I expect the best from them. I expect that they will excel because excellence is synonymous with having a, a, a wonderful relationship with God. If we are in a wonderful relationship with God, it's automatic. We become like Him. As we are united with Him, we become like Him. We will realize we are made in His own image. He's an excellent God. And so we become excellent in everything we do. He guides us, gives us strength and wisdom. But here it is. If you ever feel empty on the inside, if you have ever heard people telling you you're not good enough, flee from that error. Run to God's truth. It's only the tangible presence of God that will fill you. If you ever have the need to please people around you, if you ever find yourself having the need to look good for you to be accepted by people, flee from that error. It's only the presence of God. I'm not trying to say nga, di na lang po ka magsulog po, in sakto. But you know what I mean, right? That's the first thing. Secondly, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10, this error is very dominant. Let's show the error first. It's regrets. They're always gonna be lesser than repentance. A lot of people live with regrets. This is a wall of error that stops them from moving forward. Regrets, they come usually after we experience a failure. Regret is a feeling of sadness, is disappointment over something that has happened or been done. Don't live in regrets. Rather, experience the freedom, experience the freedom in repentance. Don't be too hard on yourself. Rather, forgive yourself. How many of you today, you're not only feeling empty, there's so much regrets in your heart. I wish I've done this. I wish I'd done that. Kita na to. Kung ang emptiness, naghisgot siya about having done everything, yet you still feel empty. Regret is about having done something that you know is wrong. In 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, it says, For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, and that is itemized as regret, kanang mga pagmahay. These regrets keeps us in the dark. These regrets are stopping you from moving forward because you've already failed, because you've hurt somebody. And these regrets are somewhat strings and attached to it are, are, are huge weights that is pulling you down. 
But God said, this worldly sorrow which lacks repentance results in spiritual death. Ikaw ra'y mamatay, anak. Ikaw ra'y patyon, anak, imong mga pagmahay. Being remorseful is not enough. Regrets, regretting over something you've done in the past, it's not enough. The devil wants you to remember those failures. The devil will point it out to you na ang imong nabuhat mao ni mao na tagsa-tagsahon kadungdung ka katong 1985 Kung <laughs> sinang tuig ron 2019 pahinumduman ba ka na huwag pagay ka na tao atong 1985 kadungdung ka and people around us are experts at calling out the failures that we have done Gawantay mo, kanamulikas to ang mga balay sa itong mga probinsya. Ay, si Juan, Carlos, katunang Juan, nakaikit sa gamay mo siya. <laughs> Di ba? Muna mo sa'yo, mulitas itong mga balay, kasuwito na lang mga tao, kaila kay sila na po. Because people are very, are experts at calling out the mistakes that we have done. The failures that we have somehow, you know, exhibited in life, but not so with God. If you have repented over it, it's, it's God. It's forgiven. Amen. The kind of sorrow God wants, it's not something that leads us, uh, it, it, that, leads, uh, uh, that leads us away from sin. And it, uh, God wants us to experience leads us away from sin. Regrets, they bring us towards sin. Mo nang ingon nga puslan man, nga nabuhan na ako ni Asigi na lang. And you are somehow engulfed and taken over by darkness. Tungod sa imong pagbasol, tungod sa imong pagmahay, you don't esteem yourself well. You don't value yourself well. I'm not saying na bisa pag nakasala ka, okay lang ihapon. No! But it's when we have committed an error, it's when we sin, it's when we fail, and yet we come before God and say, Lord, forgive me, I humble myself, I made a wrong decision. That was a wrong turn. God, forgive me. And when you're so genuine about it, it leads you to salvation. Very easy for us to live in, in a life wherein we have trapped ourselves. Di na tamo gawa sa balay. Kay hadlo ka, makasala na po. Di na tama ibog sa pag-usaw. Kay hadlo ka, masakitan na po. Iyay. Hadlo ka, musuway. We don't wanna try harder. We don't wanna engage into this matter of business anymore because we know we've done something already in the past and yet we fail. Regrets. Living a life in regrets will keep you caged. It will, it, it will trap you. It will lessen your impact. This is an error. These are walls that the devil wanted to erect in your life so you could not get out to where God wants you to be. There's so much more you can do and yet you're just discouraged because of your past mistake. See, the devil wants to tell you this because not only are you feeling empty, you are hindered. You see, God decided you to accomplish and to do so much more. And part of conquest are somehow the seemingly failing moments, setbacks. There will always be setbacks. There will always be failures. Because nobody gets it right the first time. If, especially if it's a skill-based skill -based, uh, something that you do, a profession. Nobody gets it right the first time. Nobody gets it right the first time. Bisa kung sa panasya na trabaho, nobody gets it right the, the first time. 
as they say, practice makes perfect. Ma basketball or whatever sport that may be, practice makes you better. But what if you give up the first time na nisuway ka o na fail ka? You see, that's where the devil, that's what the devil wants to do to keep you at bay. The devil wants you wants to limit your potential. The devil wants to limit your impact. It's so hard. When you try to do something good, the devil throws at you a lot of negative things, a lot of negative experiences, so that you don't feel like doing it. And that is where he's successful. But come on, it only takes it only ta it, it takes it only takes repentance for us to come back to terms with God and say, Lord, I am sorry. And it's not just being sorry, Lord, I am sorry enough that I will change. I'll change my ways. I acknowledge I've done wrong. Have a, I acknowledge I've hurt this person. And I've acknowledged, oh God, I've violated what you said. Now I have not lived on you. Wala ko ni salik sa inyo. Lord, I am sorry. So instead of feeling regret, which will keep you enslaved, you repent. Amen. So that's a wall of error. We need to destroy these walls of error because for every error from the devil, there's always an antidote from God's truth. First, the error of emptiness. We defeat that with the tangible presence of God. The error of regrets. We, re we defeat that by repentance. Thirdly, in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39, Paul said, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. And this is a very familiar wall that the devil somehow have placed over our lives. And it's the error of rejection, which is always defeated by God's truth of His unconditional love for us. Amen. Amen. Tignan mo tapat, gidawat, dawatong gihapon ka sa kinong. Dawatong ka sa kinong. No amount of mistakes. That's why you must not live in regret. No amount of rejection by the people around you will ever separate you from the love of God. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing on all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus. You see, in connection to regrets, when you fail, people will tell you, you are a failure. But as we always say, failure is not a person. Failure is only a moment in time. You may have failed, but you are not a failure. You've done something that has failed, but that does not identify you as a person na failure ka. That's when we feel rejected. Because people... They're very fast in labeling us as failures. Ignong gawa kay ayo. Bisa pa ko sao ni mo pa rin kamo. Dili na dyan ka madawat. And we have these metrics sa mga companies. We have these expectations sa school. We have this even for our kids. We place so much demands on relationship. Dapat ang lalaki ingon ani. Dili dapat mo bus og 57. Dapat maskulado, walay tiyan. O ana, daghan kay kubagsa kanidaan. Dapat as so we have painted a picture of our ideal guy. 
And when we painted the picture, and when we, when we run it to the filtering system, and makita na to, dada sa database, non in Catholic Church. Uy! Wala! <laughs> Di ka pasal. Kung mangita ko to, babay, baka ha, dapat taas o buhok. Dapat kulot na medyo straight. Ano ba yung buhok na kulot na medyo straight? Wavy. Wavy. Pwede. Di ba? That's the problem. We live in a world with lots of expectation. We live in a world where they're at school, in the house, expectation from our parents, expectation when we have set for our kids, expectation na to sa itong asawa, ang mga asawa, di ka ba muluto? Minyo na lang taka o cook, kung mga mga galing. Kung mga ka na hindi lang asawa, nang hindi ka cook. Kung asawa ni Mang Laba, siya nang hindi ka washing machine. And all the above, all the above leads people to feel rejected in church somehow. There's even this demand, you must do this and you must come to church, you must give this, you must do this penance or whatever traditional, whatever demands that people or religious organizations would implement. You see, as I have mentioned, and I'll mention a little while, a bit some more, we must not, you know, just try. And uh, in, 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 we must not say, I, 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 uh, I need to be at church. It's not something like, I must be there. It's something that we all need to say, I want to be there. Na hindi pa siya. Because we're not just doing church, we are being church. Because church means the called out ones, the people of God, the people that love Him, people that wants to follow Him 100%. And so you see, when all we face in this world are these criteria, these requirements, this metric system, and we will always feel rejected. But hey, Destroy the walls of rejection. You can never please everybody. Don't worry if not everybody gives their applause for you. Okay or not? Because remember, in any system, makita na to, most common system, 10% ra audience impact. Amen. Ikna mo dapat, okay ragdi kung pakpak ni mo. <laughs> or ikna mo kasi ka, okay ragdi ka mo pakpak na ko, basta mo pakpak siya na ko. <laughs> oh good, magina yun? <laughs> Magunsa man na mo pakpak ang tanan, niya siya wani pakpak. <laughs> Lord, thank you for your unconditional love. Pag-uli na ka sa kinoo, dilitan niya ang mintahan kung sa may mong nabuhat ka ron. Dilitan niya ang mintahan kung ipasara ba ka. Dilitan niya ang mintahan kung maoni, 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 maoni. The only requirement God looks at us is that if we have been united with Jesus. That's all that matters. Because at the end of the day, it's not our merit that counts is what Jesus done, has, what Jesus did at the cross. I'll talk more about that. See, we're developing this argument that errors will always be eradicated by God's truth. If you are rather hindered because there's a wall of emptiness, remember, there's that thing that will destroy emptiness, the tangible presence of God. If you're feeling hindered because of so many regrets in life, remember, you don't need to live in regrets. Just repent. Get your life right before God. 
After all, he's the only one na dapat sakto ang atong kasing-kasi. And when God says, okay, whatever people says, is irrelevant. When we go through rejection, remember that the unconditional love of God is always greater than anything this world can offer. Moving forward, there's another very common wall of error that we need to destroy. And first, I want to show you these verses. First John chapter 2. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you, not, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but from this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. And then in Ephesians 1 verse 3, it says, Paul said, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Here's the fourth error that is destroyed by God's truth. Obsession with possession can only be destroyed when we trust in God's provision. Amen. There's always a race towards a new gadget. There's always this desire for that new dress. There's always that feeling of wanting more. As if makompleto ta with possessions. And I'm telling you, it's not just obsession with possession. It's also an obsession with a feeling. And that is why so many people are entrapped by addictions of this world. Because we are obsessed after the next high. Don't get me wrong, but God is so passionate. God is so compassionate to the people who are going through this emptiness, this lack, this obsession. And when we have to run towards these things, more than God is because the devil wants to herald a case that you can live without God. Just obey your thirst, the devil will whisper to your ear, not knowing it starts to destroy you. Obsession with things, obsession with possession. However, the antidote to that would always be to trust in God's provision. You remember the Garden of Eden? God said, Hey guys, this is your new home. And I'm saying, Wow, Lord, you're very generous. What a generous provision. All trees in the garden were theirs to eat. Na dito na lang. Nay santol, nay rambutan, nay manga, nay makupa, nay durian. Sa paman nga mga, tanan nga mga, bisan nga, walay, yun nila, may prutas dito. Bisan kung saan nga mga prutas na dito. All trees were for them to eat, except one. That is, you must not eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Morang yung nagingon sa ginawa nga, dili ipakaong. That was a test for them. God has provided them everything except that. Otherwise, you know, if their love is not tested, it's not true love. That's the only way they, they could show God that they trust Him by obeying that one thing. You know what the devil tries to do? The devil tried to do the devil deceived them into thinking that God is not generous. God is trying to, to hide something from you. Ah, 
God does not want you to eat of that fruit because the moment you eat of that, you will like Him. God is trying to, and so the devil planted a seed of error in their minds. And since then, when they ate of the fruit of that tree, they have disobeyed God. And since then, there was this chase after the forbidden things. Sa atong mga kinabuhi. If we look at it in detail, makita na ito, mauna ang ang, ang ginoon ay provision of that right person for you. <coughs> but what does young people do? They go for it even when it's not yet time for that experience. Go into a relationship, early premature relationship, a sinful relationship. God wants us all to get married and to settle. Amen. God has placed this wonderful design of marriage. The perfect atmosphere for a man and a woman in union is in marriage. Sex within the boundaries of marriage, it is designed by God for pleasure, for, for creation, procreation, for companionship and all these pleasures of marriage. But it is in the context of marriage that is God's provision. You don't play around with someone except in the context of marriage where you can experience the blessing of marriage. If you try to do it and so be obsessed by it outside of God's principles, that's why God mga nasakitan. Yes. When we try to live lives outside of God's context and God's design, because it is not His design, it's full of fault. Eventually, you'll realize you get you feel used. You feel like you feel empty. The same is true. Financial provisions, when it's not yet right for us to get certain things, you know, we don't rush ourselves towards it. And that hand, the problem about money is mismanagement. Ang ginawa wala na kulang sa paghata, but because of mismanagement, because of our obsession with a lot of things, instead of trusting God's provision. Amen. Kung nagkaroon ka buntagon, subdiktan now ang inyong cellphone, i-type letter S, letter H, O, P, P, E. Shopee. Tanawa nito. Tanawa nito sa kanang murag icon, ng murag person. You. Tanawa nito ang mga orders. <laughs> To receive. Kung tanaw na mo sa mga to receive, di man ko ni kinanglano, no? So, di cancel. Trust in God's provision. How many young persons here? Kung ulitaw, kung dalagay mo tapat, hindi na siya naayaw kung dati. Trust in God's provision. Amen. If that person beside you is a professional and gusto yung magdato diretso, gusto mga milyonaryo diretso, igna siya, ayaw pagdali. Trust in God's provision. You see, if we try to do it our way, we all have moments wherein we rush things. And when we rush things, Ang may hita po, disgrasya na hinoon. Amen. Kanang magdali ka, niya matunog ka o tamtak sa stanglawong ma, sa tunog. Whereas ka na naginahinay ka, di ba? Inahinay na yung mulin ako, ang murang iring mo. Pag tunog ni mo, uy, sakit man, di kayo ni mo iloon. Indirit sa tunog. Al sa sinuti, di ba? Pero ka ng paka, rabid so. Ay, sale dito na, ay, sale? Dagan na yun. Ay, sale na rin. 
Nah, di tayo mong crush mo ba? Daga ka rin sa... Nay, nay, kuha po rin to. Nay, cute din to. So, sige ni mong dati. Ang mga na nao na hiyongan. Amen. Whether you're a professional, ayaw pagdali. Kung single ka, ayaw pagdali. Kung estudyante ka, samot ng ayaw pagdali. Isa ito pang ingon. No? And I'll um, talk about this a lot, boy-girl relationship sa Catalyst Church. We don't prohibit you know, a a relationship because God wants us to settle, God wants us to marry, pero dapat sakto na context. Okay? But we do allow, we have this standing rule, ang upan sa inyo, magulang napil, siguro nakadungog, or wala mo kadungog, sa inyo na-declare ni. No, we don't say mag-uyab-uyab, hindi mo talaga nag-uyab-uyab. Gusto ta, hanay, uyab, leading to a godly marriage. Amen? Pero kung batik ka na wong, pwede na. <laughs> ah. Ang mga batik na wong, sayuhan ninyo. Kasi <laughs> <laughs> ba, pangyawat na ba? <laughs> Sugda na itong sayo. But if you're confident, you're handsome, you're beautiful, magpaabot kasi sa itong panahon. Amen? Amen. Tignan mo dapat, pagod na. <laughs> Let us not be obsessed with emotions. Let us not be obsessed with relationships. Let us not be obsessed with possessions. We trust God's provision. A lot of people are entangled. A lot of people are trapped because they rush through things. Amen. And finally, I almost forgot my time. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. God saved you by His grace when you believe. You can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Most powerful message that comes from the Lord. We need to destroy walls of error, and it's the walls of religion. Because religion is always lesser than having a relationship with Jesus. I'm not saying that religion is bad. Religion is not bad at all. Religion is only, by definition, a system of religious beliefs and practices system of religious beliefs and practices. In other words, mga ginamot, as a church, we have caught and caught religion because we have a system of belief and practices. But as a church, we don't want to be religious and certainly we are not saying that this religion will get us to heaven. Because no religion will get us to heaven. However, this religion, whatever it, whatever religion in the world, any system or religious belief or practices that is rooted only in the word of God, that is what matters. And we only we believe in the Bible. And the Bible said. As what we've read in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. God's salvation, God saved you by His grace when you believe. Believe in what? You can take credit for this. It is a gift from God. In other words, wala yung religion, pwede mo yung mong na, ah, kung wapil ka ng religion, malangit ka. Kung wapil ka sa mua, no? malikay ka sa impyerno. Kay gift siya sa gino. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. Di punta kayo ngayon nga, ay, maluwas niyo ko kay naghatag man ko, nagbinotan man ko, and all these things. But rather, it is a gift from God para dilita makapanghinambo. Now, 
going direct to the point. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. When your religious system, belief, and practices aligns to that, you're safe. Amen. And that's what we've been all doing. That's what we've all been preaching. It's not about something that when a religion starts to tell you, kanira ni religion, kumuhawa ka ni ng religion, nagperno ka o di ka maluwas or whatever it is, that's plain manipulation. There are even religions that says, no, ako nakaroon si Jesus. That's wrong. The religions, the religion that says you have to do this, do this, do this, do this. And the, the tricky thing is some religion, they would believe in Jesus as their Savior. And they would even confess that Jesus is Lord. Pero taman ra sa istorya. But the actual lifestyle is not reflective of a relationship with God. That's error. That's why we must not we must not know God only by our words. Eh, pwede tang mag-istorya na born again ko or Christian ko but our lives are not telling us or showing the fruit. Amen. I want to show all these things. Error versus truth. We need to destroy the walls of error in our lives. If you would, if you could ever relate to any of it, this morning God will destroy these errors and pulihin niya, pulihan niya of truth from God's word. Amen. Let's all stand. And this morning I want to pray for us. I'm going to pray for us. And if you're here this morning and you have, you're rather feeling rejected, you're feeling emptiness. Or maybe for a long time. How many of you are hearing this? Na I regret If anybody here, you feel that you have been obsessed with something. I don't know. But this message from the Lord has the potential to transform your life. This message from God has the potential to bring about a new beginning. Come on, don't be trapped. Don't be hindered by these walls of error. Shake it off tonight, this morning, but not only that, destroy it with God's truth. Never be empty again. When you run to God, His love is always, His love is always available. Don't be too hard on yourself. Some of you have been living in regret, mga pagmahay. Come on. Receive God's love the moment you repent. The moment you say, Lord, I've sinned against you. But Lord, I have been trapped by this habit. I want to come clean before you. Come on, this morning, some of you may even feel rejected. You've felt in your life na may madawat sa kuwa kung ano makay mong seryoso sa kuwa o kung sa magaling. Come on, this is God talking to you right now. More than the words that I can ever utter or say, God knows your situation. You need to receive the unconditional love of God. Again, again, if your satisfaction is with things, if your satisfaction is with an experience and so you're obsessed to that, just trust in God's provision. And you know, He will never withhold anything that's good for you. And lastly, I want to challenge also, if you're here this morning and you felt like you have been religious, but you're not transformed. You've been coming to church, you've done religious duties, but you feel still feel something is missing. It's because religion is not the way. As much as we have religious practices, we have religious beliefs. Let me tell you this, Jesus is the way. 
the truth and the life. And I know we have been brought up to believe in a certain manner. We respect that. I respect that. I have been brought up in a certain manner. This is not about anything, a hate speech or anything against whatever religion people may have. You see, this is about truth. The devil has kept us. The devil has made us believe, believe in a certain set of rules. But God wants to set us free this morning. And the Bible said, the moment you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you, you are saved. But that's not enough. You need to confess with your mouth and show with your life that He is Lord. Iha makita ang tinod ng maluwasan. Ika nang siya lang atong ang kunon na siya lang ang makaluwasan to. We need to reject the lies that the devil has planted in our minds and our hearts. That's why until the time na makaingon ta ni Anna 100%, I follow Jesus no matter what people say. That's the only time we have crossed to salvation. That's the only time makaingon ta nga, Lord, na kay gibuhat sa kong kasing-kasing sa kong tinamuli. Si God, si Jesus God, is a jealous God. Marriage is a picture of God's love. Ang gugmas ni Jesus ay ang church. It's the union of husband and wife. And that's why we can all connect. It does not make sense. Kung may ngon ang bana sa iyang asawa na dahil dili ika ilisan. Punan lang taka. Does that make sense? It it can come across like may ngon ang asawa nga what can, what, di, ba, di ba ba ko enough? Di ba? How would a woman, how would you feel if you're a woman and you ignore kasi mo ang bana na dilip di ka ilisan punan lang taka you will feel violated bisa kung sa pagkaliberal ang kalimutan and I know there are again religion that permits that and it's because these women wa mo mo sila'y mabuhat but given the chance with no external rules that will prohibit a woman from feeling what she wants to feel she wants exclusivity mo yung ngayon siya I want you 100% and there should be no double standard okay lang ang lalaki okay lang ang lalaki na ilain ang babae di pwede na ilain but I'm bringing, bringing that up to point us to a relationship with Jesus kung si Jesus ang Savior siya dapat ang tanan wala na ilain di na kayo nun magbinuutan sa na I have the one to be Jesus. No, it's our faith in Jesus. Really, okay, Jesus plus, plus, plus. That's where the difference lies. And when we make Jesus the Lord of our lives and forsaking all others, respecting whatever upbringing na naan ato, but believing in our heart, Lord Jesus, pasayin mo ako, I have rejected you. I have not believed entirely in you. Today, I will give you my life. If you do that, you will slowly and you will see a dynamic turn around sa yung kinabot. You will be untangled. That's why faith in Jesus is most necessary. Come on, lift your hands to heaven this morning. God, we are destroying these walls of error in the name of Jesus. Come on, believe with me. Emptiness, you are destroyed because the presence of God is enough for us. Regrets, we destroy you in the name of Jesus. Spirit of heaviness, the spirit of loneliness, you are destroyed. The sting of guilt, you are destroyed. As this people comes before the Lord and repents and comes and opens their heart before God. The spirit of rejection, the rejection is destroyed because nothing will ever separate us from the love of God. Addiction is destroyed in the name of Jesus because Lord, we trust in your provision 
And oh God, thank you that we are no longer enslaved to any system. But Lord God, we can be set free because we have a relationship with you. Father, I pray for every hand that are raised this morning. Father, I pray that you will untangle them. I pray that the walls of error is destroyed over their lives. And by the blood of Jesus, I declare freedom. And by the blood of Jesus, His unconditional love overwhelms you. It envelopes you and fills you with the joy that is coming from Him. Lord, salamat sa mong provision. Salamat sa mong pagkamayo. Most of all, salamat sa mong presensya sa matang mo sa kanamo, Lord God. We honor you. We trust you. Thank you for your freedom. Thank you for your valuable truths. Mga kamatuhuran sa ibang pulong that set us, sets us free. And we thank you and we exalt you and believe that we've done all this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Thank you for listening to Catalyst Church Podcast. For more updates, like us on Facebook at Catalyst Church Cebu or visit our website at catalystchurch.ph.